Welcome to part four of the Absolute Beginners Garden 101. In this video, we're going to talk about what you need to know about transplanting. We're going to talk about when you're at that nursery or any place that sells plants, how do you make sure that you go home with a healthy plant? We're also going to talk about hardening off. What is it and how do you go about doing it? Then we're going to talk about how do you transplant. There are a few, a few tips that I want to go over um, to make sure your transplanting experience is a good one. And then we're also going to talk about why tomatoes are special in terms of transplanting. Then lastly, we're going to talk about properly spacing and thinning your plants. So when you're at that nursery or any place that sells plants and you're looking at purchasing a plant, there's some things that you might want to look for to make sure that when you um, take that plant home, it's healthy and it's going to do well in your, your garden. You want to examine that foliage. You want to make sure that the, the leaves are healthy, that they're green, they're lush. You don't want anything that's crumbly, dry, wilty. Um, this, this can be a sign of disease or stress. You also wanna examine the branches of your plant. You don't want anything that's broken um, because broken branches are a gateway into which pests and disease can enter into your plant and kill it. So you want to, to make sure that your branches are not broken. You also want to examine the root system. Do, do your best to examine that root system. As we've talked about many times before, healthy roots equals a healthy plant. Healthy roots are going to be white. Uh, so you want to make sure that your, your roots, the, the color is appropriate. Uh, you also want to do your best to avoid buying a root bound plant. Plants that are root bound, uh, their root system is already unhealthy. What happens when plants get root bound is that these roots, they've run out of room in their pot and so they're not developing properly. So do your best to avoid purchasing a root bound plant. You also want to examine um, your plant to see if there's any insect activity that you can see. So you're looking for uh, holes on, in the leaves, I mean, chewed areas. You also wanna see um, if there's maybe a disease on the plant. So you're looking for anything that's discolored, um, mushy, uh, blackened areas, uh, could be even yellow um, areas or, or white. Uh, that any of that can be a sign of a, a disease or a fungus or something that you says, I'm unhealthy, don't, don't buy me. Another thing that you want to keep in mind when you are purchasing a plant is that it is better to purchase a plant that's in bud versus a plant that's in flower. Uh, a plant that's in bud is going to transplant better and it's going to thrive better than a plant that's in flower. It's not that it's wrong to purchase a plant that's in flower. It's just if you have the option, choose a plant that's in bud versus a plant that's in flower. And then lastly, you want to make sure that you handle your, your plant properly. You want to pick it up by that container. You don't want to grab onto the plant because you're going to damage it. And then all this work that you've done in examining this plant is going to be for naught um, because you, you, you've damaged it. So make sure that you pick it up by that pot. So once you have your plant, um, whether it's store-bought or if you're doing seedlings, um, you, you're going to need to harden off your plant. Um, some store-bought plants um, may be fine without hardening off. They may have already gone through the process. It just sort of depends on where, what the, the conditions were in the store. So you also want to pay attention to that. But if you've grown anything from seed and you're starting stuff indoors, you are going to need to harden off your plants. So what is hardening off? It is the process by which you slowly acclimate your plants to outdoor conditions. Your seedlings that you've started inside have no idea what the sun is. You may be thinking, well, they've been under grow lights. That's the same thing, right? It's not. If you, if you um, just take your seedlings that have been inside and you just stick them out and put them in the, the sun, you're going to scorch those leaves um, or you're going to burn your plants and 
you might end up killing them because they've never experienced the sun. They have no idea what that's about. They've also never experienced wind or rain or any temperature um, um, variations. And so you need to get them used to outdoor conditions so that they can thrive. The hardening off process is basically toughening up your plants so they can handle the outdoors. If you don't go through this process and you just immediately transplant your plants, you're gonna weaken them or stress them and they may never recover. You, they may never grow to their full potential, their full size. Uh, they may never get the, the bountiful harvest that you'd hoped for or the, the lush blooms that, that you so desired. Uh, you may even kill the plants. So you wanna make sure you go through the hard enough process. So how do you go about doing that? We're gonna go over two basic methods on how to harden off. You're gonna to wanna to, um, start a minimum of seven days before you transplant in the ground. And this, can, this process can take anywhere from um, 10 days to maybe even 14 days, depending on what those weather conditions are. For most plants, uh, you're going to be hardening off in April because in Georgia, you're gonna to wanna to transplant around May 1st. Uh, this is a, a good time to do it because while you can get a freeze in May, it's very rare. It does happen. It has happened, but it's not the norm. So May 1st is a great, great time to, to shoot for for transplanting. So you're going to want to back up from that date um, at least seven days, possibly two weeks. And that's when you're going to start trans um, to start your hardening off because at the end of the hardening off process, that's when you're going to transplant. So you also wanna keep in mind that you're gonna to need to be flexible during this hardening off process because as we know in April, the weather is all over the place. And so you're gonna to need to keep an eye on the highs and the lows. Uh, is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Is it gonna be a windy day? Uh, Cause all that plays in the factor of, of how long this process might take. So day one of hardening off, you're gonna to wanna to put your plants in like a little, your seedlings in a little tray. So you can just take the whole tray and move it to where you need to, to go. It's gonna make things easier. You're gonna to wanna to put them in a shaded, sheltered location because you don't want them to experience too much wind because they could get broken off, they're not used to it. Uh, so you want them to be in a shaded, sheltered location and you're gonna leave them outside for about three to four hours and then you're gonna bring them back in. Each day throughout this process, you're going to increase the time that they're outside by roughly two hours each day. And then you wanna make sure that throughout the entire process that the, the soil stays moist, but not soggy. These, what the, the, what the containers that the seedlings are in are small and they get dried out very quickly. And so that's where your tray comes in handy. You can pour some water in there, let them absorb it and then dump off the excess. Day three or four or three and four, you're gonna wanna start transitioning your um, part shade plants and your full sun plants to where they experience a little sunlight during the, this, this process. So you're gonna to wanna to shoot for some morning sun and then the rest of the time they're gonna be in the shade. And the, the time that they're outside should be anywhere from starting from about six hours and then you're working up to that 10 hour mark. Day five through seven. You're gonna start about 12 to 14 hours and then you're working up to 24 hours of them being outside. So at this point, you're going to start transitioning your full sun plants to where they're experiencing more full sun conditions. Uh, this is where you're also gonna wanna really start looking at the, the lows for the night because you're since you're working up to 24 hours, they're gonna need to experience some time outside overnight. But you don't want it to be much below 50 degrees. Um, you want them to, to not be out there where it's too, too cool. So around 50 degrees, um, that's when they can start experiencing some overnight temperatures. And then at the end of the seven, maybe up to 14 day process, then they should be able to handle anything nature throws at them except for a freeze. You may still need to cover them if you have a late freeze. Some things to keep in mind. 
Again, we talked about like, do not let the soil get dried out. That's going to harm your plants. Uh, keep it moist, but not soggy. After the end of this process, that's when they should be planted into the ground. And then the last thing you wanna keep in mind is that you want to protect your seedlings from predators. Snails and slugs love tender young seedlings. So place them up high, like on a table or a chair. This is gonna make it much more difficult for those snails and those slugs to find your seedlings. So the other method um, to, to hardening off is using a cold frame. A cold frame can be a lot less hassle because you're not moving your seedlings around to different places. They're in a, a one location because a cold frame tends to be more of a more permanent structure. You can purchase a, uh, an expensive cold frame, uh, the one that has like a heater in it so you can better regulate your temperature. Uh, or you can use a make a cheap one like the one picture at the bottom using hay bales and just put an old window that you can prop up um, and lower depending on what you need to do. And then at the, when you're done with your cold frame, you have all your mulch. So how do you use a cold frame to harden off? Again, you'll wanna start a minimum of seven days before you're gonna transplant. It might take up to 14 weeks, uh, not 14 weeks, 14 days, uh, two weeks, uh, to get them properly acclimated to outdoor conditions. One thing you will need to keep in mind if you're gonna use a cold frame is you're gonna to need to make sure you regulate the temperature properly inside. You don't want it to get much above 80 degrees because it could cook your plants. Uh, you also don't want them to be, get below 50 degrees. So you're gonna to need to make sure that, that you regulate that temperature. So day one, using a cold frame, basically the same, um, or the same as, as the other method, you're going to put your seedlings in the cold frame. You're gonna have that lid open um, for about three to four hours. Um, and then you're gonna increase how long that lid remains open by two hours each day. And you're really gonna need to know what your highs and your lows are for a cold frame, because if it's gonna get, your cold frame is always gonna be a little warmer than the outdoor temperatures if that lid is closed and you don't wanna cook your plants. You're gonna make sure that you wanna close that lid at night. Um, if it's going to be, you don't want the, the cold frame to get much colder than 40 degrees. So depending on how, what the lows are, you may need to cover your cold frame to keep those plants a little warmer. And then of course, each day you're gonna open it more, have them exposed to outdoor temperatures longer. And then by the end of the process, they should be ready to go into the ground. Keep in mind that both of these processes is, is a basic template. The weather is going to play a huge factor in how long this is going to take. Uh, and you also may be thinking if you work full time, how in the world am I supposed to, you know, six hours, I'm, I'm at work for, for eight hours a day plus the commute. Uh, how, how can I do hardening off while I'm working full time? So glad you asked. I have a video, um, please check out um, my, my Grow Something blog. I have a video on how I harden off my plants while working full time. Uh, it's, it's just, it's what I do, it's what I found has worked for me and it hopefully will help you in that process as well. So please log on to the Jefferson Public Library website. It's listed below, click on Grow Something and uh, I, have, I have an article on how to have a garden while working full time. And so please check out the information in there. So now your seedlings are ready to be transplanted in the ground. There's a few things you need to know. What we're gonna go over is true of every plant except for tomatoes. And we're gonna talk about why tomatoes are special in just a moment. So when you um, pull that seedling out of its pot, you want to make sure that the soil level of what the, where the seedling's at is level with the soil of the garden. And you can see an example of, of what that should look like um, in the picture there. It's also helpful to water your seedlings before you transplant as well as after you transplant. The, the watering is gonna help you get that entire root ball out of the, the pot. You don't want any of that, the roots to break off um, because then you're damaging your root system and that's gonna cause your plant to struggle. 
You want to gently massage those roots. And then you also want to look at the roots, make sure that they're white because healthy roots are white. And then gently press down the soil um, after you filled back in the, the dirt in the hole. Um, this helps just anchor the plant, helps it get rid of the, the air bubble, any air pockets, and it just, uh, just a good technique to, do, to use. So tomatoes, why are tomatoes special? Um, tomatoes, if you've ever examined them, they have these little hairs on, on the, the stem. And if these hairs touch the soil, they're gonna develop roots. And this is a good thing. So when you go to transplant your tomatoes, you wanna take off those bottom leaves and then you're gonna plant not just the root ball, but also a portion of the stem. So what happens when you do this is that the root ball is going to, of course, develop into a root system. And then these little hairs on the stem that you planted, they're gonna develop what's called surface roots. This is going to expand your root system. And that's, that's good because it's gonna help the plant absorb more water, take up more nutrients. It's also gonna provide more stability to that plant. So when those thunderstorms come through, they can better withstand those high winds. You'll still need to cage them, but the more roots you have, the more stability and the more nutrients and water that they can take up in a healthier plant you will have, says Yoda. So how do you um, go about spacing and thinning your plants? Spacing, proper spacing, proper distance between plants is very important. So when you um, plant from seed, you're gonna thin those plants to the proper spacing. If you're transplanting, you're going to plant them already at the proper spacing. Now, why do plants need all this space? Uh, it's very, uh, very, um, an easy mistake to make uh, to plant your, your plants too close together. Often we think as gardeners, well, if I have more plants, I'm going to have a more bountiful harvest. Uh, I'm going to have, just be able to, to grow more. And we often forget that as plants grow, they, they need all the space. So if you overcrowd your plants, what's gonna happen is you're gonna damage your root system. The, the roots of the neighboring plants are going to start competing with each other for space, for water, for nutrients. And so instead of having two robust, healthy plants, you're going to have two more weakened plants because they're, they're fighting each other for, for their, their nutrients. And so these plants are not gonna to grow to their full size. They're not gonna produce uh, as much of a harvest or have as many blooms. Uh, so you want to make sure that they are spaced properly so the roots don't interfere with each other. You also, especially in Georgia, we have hot, humid summers. You want to make sure that your plants are properly spaced so they have good air circulation. This is particularly true in tomatoes. Um, tomatoes, if you don't have good air circulation, you're going to encourage that blight and that uh, fungus and also pest problems. And, and that's really true for any plant. If they don't have good air circulation, all you're doing is encouraging disease and pests. So you want to make sure your plants are spaced or thinned to the proper distance. So how do you know what that is? Each plant is different. The best thing to do is to look at that seed packet or the label that came with your plant. It should have that information on there. If it doesn't, for every a seed that has ever been in the Jefferson Seed Library, we have that information for you. You can log on to the website, uh, click on Seed Library, then click on Growing Tips, and it's gonna have that information there for you. If you've purchased something that we have not ever had in the Seed Library, I highly recommend going to our uh, Garden Helps section. I have a list of reliable, trusted sources that you can go to to get correct information. As shocking as it is, the internet can lie to you. And so I have a list of resources that you can trust that is gonna have good information and you don't have to wonder, is this correct? So wrapping all this up, 
we talked about when you're at the store, some things you need to look for when you choose a plant to make sure that your plant is going to be healthy. We also talked about hardening off, what it is, how do you go about doing it? And then I encouraged you to check out my blog on how to harden off if you're working full time. Then we talked about transplanting. We talked about some of the, the tips that you need to follow when you're transplanting and then why tomatoes are, they're special. They, they don't quite fall into that. And then we also talked about the spacing and the thinning, making sure that you have proper distance so you can have healthy plants. I wanna thank our sponsors that made the seed library possible. I wanna thank Howington Speed and Supply uh, locally here in Jefferson, Georgia. I also wanna thank Burpee uh, for their, their generous donation um, of seeds. And then I also wanna thank community members like you who have carefully saved and donated their seeds. If you want any more information on uh, how to, to grow, um, how to, to save seeds, uh, please check out the, the Jefferson Public Library's website. It's jefferson.prlib.org uh, and click on Seed Library. Is we have a wealth of information to help you have the best garden possible. And then please check out my blog, Grow Something. I got all kinds of tips and tricks of what you can do to help you have the best garden that you possibly can.